This video is supported by Golden Era Muscle. Please visit goldeneramuscle.com for training information and supplements. Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here. Today I'd like to start a new series on Frank Zane after my poll obviously chose him as the winner. Um, he was known as the chemist otherwise known as the statue, and I'd like to focus these first few videos on his phenomenal abdominal development. This particular video will focus on his general guidelines in reducing the waist and actually keeping it small. We can start off with this awesome shot of Frank Zane. This basically sums up Frank Zane. I love this shot, and you can see why he was called the statue. He's got perfectly symmetrical and a beautifully aesthetic physique, Everything is proportional, and even the tan um, really delineates the perfect definition that he carried as well. With I mean, this is ma mass with class at every level, and um, I guess the, the best thing about Frank Zane was that he was a very intelligent bodybuilder. So let's have a look at what his particular guidelines are in actually keeping the waist small. Now one of the basic things to understand about abdominal development is that it is not just about exercises and I mean Vince Gironda was one of the first people to always say this and I mean Frank Zane being a student of Vince Gironda basically shared many of his principles. The underlying fat under the skin called subcutaneous fat uh, really will always hide the abdominal development that is normally present in a human being. Now with correct diet and reduction of calories and with the correct exercise one obviously can uh, firstly bring out the abdominals and then and actually then enhance their appearance and this is the major method that Vince Gironda uh, preached which was basically the same as the one that Frank Zane preaches today so one of the most important things about abdominal development has to do with genetics and Frank Zane being as wise as he was uh, in his books has put it very simply it depends on the length of your waist um, if you were born with a short waist you're likely to develop a four pack if you have a, a longer waist like a medium waist you would most likely develop a six pack whereas a very long waist you can develop an eight or even a ten pack and these simple genetic uh, factors will determine the the musculature that one can develop in the abdominals so when it comes to now eating habits and the exercise selection and performance and other techniques, this is where I think Frank's wisdom really, really shines. If you look at his eating habits, uh, Frank Zane would always say that to actually reduce your waistline, you have to basically reduce the amount of food that you eat, not just the calories, but even the portions. And so if you were to um, just have a massive meal and just stuff yourself, of course, this is going to lead to a stretching of the stomach and the stomach whether you know it or not is an actual muscle and, and um, basically the whole musculature down uh, near the intestines if you just stuff yourself the food eventually that you eat will not be digested and you'll end up stretching all that musculature including the stomach and end up with a distended waistline basically it explains why so many people who are on growth hormone and insulin like nowadays um, which also affects the size of their organs, by the way. But because they're eating eight to 10,000 calories in, in a day, I mean, that amount of food will obviously stretch out all the musculature and give them the famous bubble gut that they all have nowadays. Of course, Frank Zane preached small, frequent meals and sipping the drinks as opposed to just gulping them down by the leader. Um, another thing that was very important um, was that he used to preach about chewing your food properly and longer and in this way you don't have to eat as much and you'll actually get more by actually digesting your food better simply by chewing longer now in terms of diet one of the things that Frank Zane would always preach about um, would be very similar to the Vince Gironda principles of eating basically a high protein diet uh, of a one gram per pound of body weight is something that Frank Zane uh, preaches. However, when it comes to carbs, it's it's similar to Vince Gironda's principles, but not exactly the same. Um, he actually recommends half a gram per pound of body weight and that you have this high protein, low carb diet 
for three days and um, on the fourth day you would have a high carb day where it's one gram per pound of body weight and then you would repeat this cycle and so basically you end up having two high carb days a week with uh, the rest of the days of the week being high protein and low carb. So now besides uh, having the correct eating habits and cutting your calories which are both very important in achieving the correct definition uh, t targeted abdominal exercise will also obviously enhance definition and actually bring out the musculature. Now the basic methodology that Frank Zane had was to use aerobics although not as popular in the golden era in the 80s he actually started adopting it. Um, he also used specific abdominal exercise mostly mostly using his own body weight with only some where he would actually use a little bit of resistance um, and now i say that and i'm going to actually expand on this particular uh, principle in a separate video where i actually am going to list frank zane's old school exercises as well as the more modern approach that he actually has because it's actually changed over the years and it's very interesting to see um, another thing that of course Frank Zane was very very famous for as shown in this phenomenal shot here this is my absolute fav favorite shot of, of Frank Zane I have to admit to that is his practice of vacuums he preached vacuums as he still does today as a perfect way of truly reducing the, um, the waistline and the reasoning behind it is that the vacuum actually affects the transverse abdominus which is basically like your own weight belt you actually have your own weight belt. It actually travels around horizontally around your waist like a like a real weight belt and doing vacuums constantly throughout the day actually uh, tightens the transverse abdominus giving you a smaller reduced waistline. And one thing I'd like to say actually about that is that we'll be obviously covering uh, an extensive video on Frank Zane's um, methodologies in getting the perfect vacuum. Now the wisdom of Frank Zane goes beyond exercise and nutrition and this is where it really gets to another level. I really like uh, this list of extra recommendations that Zane actually gives. Um, important is the frequency of training the abdominals. Frank Zane actually used to train them as much as every single day per week but he actually recommends at least for beginners to train them on every single training day that you have so if you train three days a week you would train them you would train the abdominals also three days a week he also believed in having little rest between your abdominal uh, sets and exercises also in, in doing so you would encourage uh, fat metabolism which we'll talk about in a second but also um, it makes the abdominal workout more like a cardiovascular workout. Again, this is very similar to Vince Gironda's principles of having no rest. Now, timing. This is very interesting. An interesting discussion from Frank Zane is that if you do it at the start of the workout or the end, you have advantages and disadvantages. Of course, in, at the start of the workout, the advantage is that you are more focused and you can put more concentration into your abdominal training. The disadvantage, for example, is if you've had a large meal prior to training and you start doing abdominals, because the food is not digested, you're not going to get the best type of training you could. If you actually perform the abdominal workout at the end, although you might be tired, the advantage is that because you've depleted your glycogen stores, your body is likely to, to have switched to fat metabolism and therefore you would start uh, now using up your fat storage and therefore enhance the definition uh, throughout your whole body really and therefore enhance your abdominal development. So again this is an advantages and disadvantages but again he's a very uh, intelligent uh, bodybuilder in regards to I guess giving these extra tidbits of information. Even more so we go to the esoteric techniques that Frank Zane used. Um, he was actually big in yoga and even in playing instruments and he believed that these techniques even with um, the practice of breath control all helped in abdominal development. Now breath control was another big thing that Vince Gironda also preached. So you can see as well how Vince Gironda actually 
uh, influenced Frank Zane's methodologies, especially when it came to defining the body and abdominal development. A very interesting topic, to say the least. So I leave you with this phenomenal shot of Frank Zane. Again, one of my most favorite shots here. Um, Frank Zane looks just, I mean, Jesus. Take this shot, put it up in the gym, and say, gold. I mean, this is... This is aesthetic bodybuilding. This is this is the golden era. This is this is just perfection, isn't it? I mean, damn, uh, it's just phenomenal. Frank Zane at his absolute best. I hope you've enjoyed this video on the wisdom of Frank Zane in regards to reducing the waistline. This series will continue with now. We're going to look at the next video. We're going to look at the abdominal exercises that Frank Zane chose and why, which is very important. And finally, uh, continue with his in-depth discussion on vacuums. Of course, after that, I will bring you more videos on the rest of his uh, development for the rest of his for the rest of the physique, basically. So, if you've liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't to the Golden Era Bookworm for more content like this. And leave me your comments. And thank you once again for watching. This is the Golden Era Bookworm. Bye for now.